Welcome back to ABS Grand Tournament. Uh, we are before the semi-finals. Two semi-finals, of course. Four players left. This is a single elimination tournament. So only Orange, Firebat, RDU and Stan Sivka are in the tournament left. Uh, left in the tournament. So we'll be seeing only three matches, but the stakes are high. Those are those matches are actually in the prize pool already, and the prize pool is 5k. And by the way. Wanted to remind you that if you missed uh, any matches at all, all the VODs will be, will be uploaded to Abius Gaming YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Gaming. So be sure to check that out if you missed on anything and you want to see uh, some ridiculous games. And we had those uh, in this tournament. And right now, the next match will be between Orange and Firebat. Sotl, how we doing? Doing good, man. Um, pretty pretty stacked tournament the whole way through, and we're really getting down to the nitty gritty now. We're seeing uh, two two of the most established Archon players in terms of tournament performance. Of course, Orange has had uh, I think two major victories. Firebat, of course, the the tournament record that's the envy of pretty much everyone. Of course, the world title, multiple Gfinities, mm -hmm, several mm -hmm. other tournaments as well. So, really getting down to the real creme de la creme of the tournament right now. And of course, the big talking point of uh, Firebat's tournament so far has been that Shaman deck that he's brought that's very, very specifically targeted at Hamlock. And unfortunately for him, there are not too many big game hunter targets in uh, yeah. in Orange's lineup. There is probably a Dr. Boom in the Mage and the Druid, and that is about it. Unless Orange, oh, well, who made that mistake earlier in the tournament with the Valence Chosen? I think Chosen? it might have been Orange, actually. I I'm almost sure that was orange. So if he makes this, the same mistake again, and it will make him himself vulnerable to the big, big game hunter mm -hmm. uh, in almost every single deck of Firebat, that might be something that will change uh, the outcome of the games. Also, uh, worth noting, the Rogue heavily teched against uh, weapon classes with the Harrison Jones and the Sabotage. And oh yeah, that's a good point. No weapons from Orange is in, in his entire lineup. Mm -hmm. So two dead cards. Well, not dead because sabotage is still a removal, which is okay against the priest. Yeah. Right. You can kind of maintain the board of your, of the priest with only one minion, and then you can finish it off with the sabotage. So that's cool, uh, but definitely less impactful against the mage. Yeah, but it's fairly safe to say that Firebat's tech options and his targets for his lineup are whiffing pretty heavily in this matchup against Orange. So, might be a little bit of an advantage to Orange in that element. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is a Ronin as well, so there is an additional big game hunter target. But we well, we saw the ridiculous draw of Ronin into Antonidas into three Firebats right, right yeah, yesterday. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we've seen, but we do see that Firebat has queued up with the deck that does not have the big game hunters in it. So this is probably the best matchup for his big game hunter shaman maybe because there are the two targets in the dr boom and the ronin but mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, just gonna mm -hmm. try and do it with the rogue how do you feel about this matchup i have uh, heard mixed things about this matchup the problem i mean you would like to get the coin because uh the agent is really crucial in this matchup mm -hmm. and the same goes for the back steps just to regain the tempo that the that the uh, mage can gain but at the same time agent is not that great against mad scientist because it triggers the Mirror Entity instantly, if it right. kills it. And we do see that Firebat has the, the backstab to activate his SI agent if he wants to anyway. Um, so if something like a Sorcerer's Apprentice comes down next turn to line up with this Mad Scientist, then he'll have a really, really strong turn. Uh, probably will activate the Mirror Entity and give his opponent a 3-3, but I think you'd probably be okay with that exchange. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Hello. Huh. So that starts at six mana and continues to get cheaper for every minion yeah. that dies on the board. So. And Firebird has a, a Violet Teacher in his deck. Very true. So we could see something like a Flame Waker come down, snipe out multiple tokens from a Violet Teacher, and then the Volcanic Lumberer hit the board. That should be a pretty crazy turn. The Mage Casino has already begun. Um, yeah, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Flame Cannon looks like the obvious play this turn. Um, like we said, this does get answered quite nicely by Backstab SI, but there's no mm -hmm, way mm -hmm. to uh, to avoid the Mirror Entity proc yes. if it is going to. So That's true, so you probably just use it anyway, because you have to like clear it. You have to clear the board. Wait, what about just Nomage Inventor this turn? You just saw one Flame Cannon. 
That's very true. It might be better. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Firebat has Firebat had almost exactly the same thought process as us, where like snap decision. Oh yeah, backstab SI here, but mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. yeah, then bailed out and decided that the Nomish Inventor was the was the better play. So. Yep, I like this a lot. And you're on curve. You you can trip. And also look at that. Mm -hmm. Oren just lost a draw, which is crucial. Basically, um, not killing the Mad Scientist uh, made him basically lose a free mana, lose free mana, and lose a card draw. Yep. And Harrison Jones just going to come down on curve here. Not much else to do with it in this matchup. It's not going to hit a weapon unless there's any, you know, unstable portal into Blingtron craziness. Mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. Best use of it possible here is just to play it on curve. Um, it does die pretty miserably to that piloted shredder, but he, can, he has the option to trade with it if he wants, but it looks like he's just going to allow that terrible trade to happen. Oh, you have, you have to pass at the turn. Good thing for a rogue here with this uh, in this matchup is the fact that you use the hero power on turn two, yeah. so you don't have to waste time to re-equip your weapon when uh, it's actually very valuable because you have to keep on um, the tempo on so losing two mana at the turn six or seven might be very crucial so how do you feel about four mana seven eight this turn Lothar? i would say that's a good deal mm. and you don't have a big game hunter fire button in this deck unfortunately there are four big game hunters in your other decks yep um fire but just nodding his head and saying that well that's a good play not quite enough damage to punch through this. He does have six damage between the Eviscerate and the SI to clear it, but unfortunately that requires... What about oil? Yeah, oil is fine, but it's... Um, you know, the cleaner play would have been the Eviscerate and SI, but unfortunately he was, you know, he'd need to activate both of those combos, and obviously any one of them can be activated. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, even with this, like, it's still not perfect, right? Both of yeah, these attacks... All... Both of these attacks have to go in there. So you have to lose your board, take seven face damage, and you've expended an Eviscerate and a Tinker's Oil to do this. So. The perfect play would have... Not perfect. Perfect play would be Big Game Hunter, but yep. um, a good play would have been, an example, a Blade Flurry this turn. Because you would just Oil, attack into the Lumberer, and then Blade Flurry. Sure. But at the same time, you value your Blade Flurry really high, so maybe that's yeah. a good choice. I also value their not being a 7-8 on the board pretty highly though. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. Um, so how scared of the Blade Flurry is Orange here? And I think that's kind of like the hidden upside of the play that Firebat did make here is that it puts the fear of Blade Flurry into the opponent and you might cause mm -hmm, it to mm -hmm. slow down. Um, otherwise, you know, if there wasn't the big weapon staring at him here, I'm almost certain he would develop the Sorcerer's Apprentice as well alongside this, just to max out on lethal potential next turn. I think he needs the Blade Flurry anyway. <laughs> like, he would have uh, played the Farseer and then Blade Flurry mm -hmm. and cleared the board, right? Because the Mirror Entity would proc. Yeah. So SI yeah. does come down, and only seven damage was taken from that volcanic Lambra, but that's only seven. Damage. Yeah, that's that's pretty much its job done, right? It, it got its licks in. It did the seven. So you know, two yeah. mana spell that ended up doing seven damage to your opponent's face. That's a pretty solid deal, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is one damage off lethal right now. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and develop boom. And even if one of these boom bots tickles him in the face for one damage, even if the board gets completely cleared, that will still be lethal with the frostbolt fireball follow up. You don't need anything else apart from the fireball frostbolt in your hand. Yep. Oh, that's very true because you have the mana to ping as well next turn. Yeah. So yeah, it's literally you have to clear the board. You have to not take damage from the boom bots. You have to heal. Like, you have to do a million different things this turn. Oh. That was Blade Flurry. Kind of too slow. Yeah, too late. Too late. Yeah, sorry. Um, too late to do anything. You're dead anyway. Really sad to see that. Like, the, the unstable portal hits again. Yep. Casino Mage doing casino things. As I oh, but look at that. That's actually the perfect outcome. If there wouldn't be a Fireball Frostbolt ping. But... Unfortunately for Firebat, there is a Fireball Frostbolt ping, and as I pointed out earlier, the Casino always wins. You can't fight it. They always have the edge, and again, Casino Mage comes out on top, and Unstable Portal just winning games over and over again. We've seen so many sick draws from the random effects in this deck this tournament. You know, the, the Dark Bargain, mm -hmm. 
the Dark Bargain, the, uh, from the Volcanic... From Spellslinger, right? Volca yeah, from Spellslinger, the Volcanic Lumber are there from Unstable Portal. So the random effects in the deck have uh, been working out really well for the Tempo Mage players in this tournament so far. The Volcanic Lumber was uh, was expect uh, exceptionally silly because uh, it has a um, cost reduction built in. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a double cost reduction yeah. with the Unstable Portal, which is just insane. Mm -hmm. And we're starting with the second match where Firebat sticks. No, wait, stick. Yeah, he sticks yep. to the rope. Yeah. Yep. So Firebat, following the pattern that we've talked about several times of uh, mm -hmm. sticking with the deck that he lost with, Orange choosing to queue up his Druid here. Um, this is a very, very back and forth matchup. Um, opinions are somewhat divided on who's favoured in this matchup, but Firebat definitely one of the person that I, people that I know is uh, very accomplished in this matchup. Really understands how he needs to leverage the tempo of the road cards in order to. Uh, Put the put the druid on the back foot in this sort of situation. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for Orange, there's there's the Wild Grove and Darnas's Aspirin. But which one would you favor? Um, I'm actually so we, we had this matchup before, and I liked doing the Wild Growth. And the reason for that mm -hmm. is that you had the consistent ramp into the four drop next turn. In this situation, I'm okay taking the risk with the minion first because even if it does get dealt with, which mm -hmm. is really likely against Rogue. Then your curve still works fine with yes, uh, because you're lacking the four. Exactly. So you just yeah. wild growth this turn, and then your hand starts at five the turn after. So mm -hmm. Angus yeah. is totally fine. Exactly. Well said. Uh, that leaves a turn open for Firebat though. So you can drop at free drop, and I'm sure he will do that because yeah. you need those minions on board, like yep. just just bodies on board. Absolutely. Tempoing out a 3-3 here, pretty important against Druid. Just minions on the board is the, is the thing that Druids don't want to have to deal with, and it allows you to be competitive against something like a Druid of the Claw that's played this turn, because you have the six damage now between your minion and the mm -hmm. and the, the dagger that you have equipped. Innovate. Not really useful this time. Nope. Sabotage. Not a dead card in this matchup. That's uh, definitely true. I would rather, like, it's actually two matchups are okay. Priest and Druid, in which Sabotage is kind of okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, turn seven combo. Well, you can't kill your opponent. Uh, can you? No. no. Four damage to the face, that's 24. You slam the shade on board. Your Azure Drake, Azure Drake will be killed, that's for sure. And you are left with 18 damage, uh, sorry, 19 damage next turn. Yep, not good enough. You could charge the Druid of the Claw in as well, deal 8 to face this turn, but then you know both your minions will probably yeah. get removed, so that's not good enough either. So, yeah, I just like the standard board development strategy here of uh, playing down the, the Druid in stats mode, get the extra health, make it slightly more difficult for the, uh, the rogue player to deal with. And it's better against saps. Uh, sure, yeah. Wait, is it? What? It's better in taunt mode against saps? Well, I mean... Um... But I mean, if you play a charge minion here, it will most most likely die. Right. And if you play this as a taunt minion, it will eat a sap. But it's better to eat a sap right now on turn five than eat a sap on okay. let's say seven, turn seven, turn eight. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. Hmm. And now, what Fiber has to do here? What about cycling? Uh, it looks like he's just going to favor the board clear here, and this is the kind of turn that I was talking about that he, he really likes to go for, where, you know, it's a board clear and he retains mm -hmm, a minion mm -hmm. on board. So he's not too worried about, like, the value of the um, of the, the play that he just made. You know, that wasn't a particularly spectacular blade flurry in terms of value, but just what matters that is that he's still ahead on the tempo. The board's clear, he's retained a minion. Um, so this is this is how he considers himself ahead in the matchup. Where as long as he has the minion initiative on the board, he feels pretty comfortable. Yeah, and I would like to see Orange playing uh, to play that big game Hunter as such as minion on board. The, as you said, Panther without the stealth, right? Yeah, I like it. Preparation top deck here for um, uh, Firebat would have been completely crushing, but he does already have the double Fan of Knives option, which is just fine. But Azure Drake prep Fan of Knives would have been absolutely backbreaking. Yeah. For the Druid. Because as of the turn before, playing a minion and and clearing the board is the most important thing you can do as a uh, as a rogue. Yep. Against the druid, of course. 
So now if he can pull into the second Savage Raw, he didn't, so he's going to choose to use his Innovate to go for a board development strategy instead, which I like. Getting the Shade down now, he's seen two, uh, both Fan of Knives used last turn, the Blade Flurry used the, the turn before. Mm -hmm. so there's only mm -hmm. one card in the deck. Uh, well, two actually. There's the second Blade Flurry and the Sabotage that can interact with that Shade of Naxxramas. Um, so there are a couple of options to deal with it, but I do like getting it down after you've seen so much AoE be used already. True. And the Eviscerate this turn is just devastating. Killing a 5-5 minion for 2 mana. Yeah. Huge tempo swing. 7 mana, Ancient of Law, being killed by 2 mana spell. It's almost like a sap. The only reason why it's worse than a sap is the fact that you lose face damage. Oh, and there does oh, come the that. Savage Roar just after. But now he has double combo. Wait. Uh, what? Four 14 this turn, 14 next turn? Yeah. GG? Yeah. Yep. I don't Why hate do it. Do he played one. Did he? Did Firebird play one fast here? Uh, I'm not sure. I think he's played both SIs. I'm not sure if there's been a fast here, but. Yeah, I like this play because you do get the extra damage from the shade as well. So Farsi is actually not. Ooh, he's clear. I mean, one clear is fine. One clear spend because it, it still set up a lethal next turn without right. the Farseer, of course. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, so the, the choice is you could have gone face and you beat Farseer as well. Um, you do risk dying on the backswing more that way, but you reduce his outs to something like Antique Hillbot or Lower Third. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now Firebat is pushed to use the sprint with combination of preparation to draw that single Farseer. Yep. And. That's a low Theb, but not one of the Farseer. Yeah. Wow. He has, he has the low Theb to follow up. So, yeah, I mean, it's... I can understand the play he made because he's definitely scared of dying on the backswing. Leaving up an Azir Drake against a, a rogue is just seriously dangerous business. Um, but, I mean, Orange can continue to stick to this plan, but he has to do it the right way. And the right way is combo this turn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If he if he drew to the claw charges and no this this has to be a mistake, yeah this like this is the way that that um you know you still have follow up burst that gets through lower third. If you'd have just comboed him in the face that turn, then you still have uh, drew to the claw charge to follow up next turn, and you still mm -hmm. beat lower third. So yeah, that's true. That's a very good point. And you've seen two farseers be used. I don't think we've seen uh, anti kill bot be drawn in any of Firebat's rogue games at all today. So if Orange has been paying attention to the deck build, and he may be familiar with it just because they're teammates anyway, he probably should know that Loatheb is the one thing that stops this damage going through. So I, you know, that is a pretty serious sequencing mistake from Orange to not mm -hmm. get the spells out of his hand first before a Loatheb can come down. Now we can just hero power up this turn. Yeah. And deal insane amount of damage next turn. And uh, wait. Will he have mana for for the hero power oil? Two, three, and... seven, nine. Yeah, he's fine. Okay. Yeah, he, fine. he can he can play everything next turn. This still threatens lethal when you retain the eviscerate this turn for even more burst damage. So, ancient of law to heal has to be the play here. Yeah. You don't Definitely. need you do not need any other cards. You have the two cards you need. Just do not die next turn and you win the game. Uh, so if he goes to twenty two, is it leave uh, twenty one? Twenty two, right? 22 because the hero power. Hero power yeah. uh, so that's six damage from the uh, oil, eight damage from the uh, from the pirate, 12, 17 damage. Uh, but he can fit the eviscerate in as well, can he not? Yeah, I just already. Oh, uh, you took that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this looks like it is actually going to play out to be a win here for Orange, unless uh, Firebat sneaks into some extra oh. damage. That's uh, two extra damage. That's not enough. Okay. Uh, is it? Wait. I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm trusting your maths here, Lothar. Please, you you count. Uh, well, he doesn't have Blade Flurry. So this is 5, 8, and 6, 14, 16, 20. Yeah, that's 20. 20, okay. So it's still 2. So that's game. He played the Deadly Poison so fast, I was like, oh, am I mistaken? Yeah. Um, so yeah, slight misstep with the ordering. Um, not investing his combo before a Lothar could come down, but, but still. Saved by the top deck. Saved by the top deck, yeah. Uh, interested if there was any draw that turn that gave Firebat lethal. I doubt it because he was already using his full mana to, to deal the damage anyway. And so prep was probably the best thing he could have drawn just to, in, in order to activate some more damage. Unfortunately, there wasn't any more damage in hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there was a Blade Flurry in hand, then obviously the prep would have been good enough. But 
as it stands, we're not quite there. And as with many games today, Lothar, Force of Nature, Savage, Savage Raw. Yep. Force of Nature wins the game. Firebird is definitely not happy with that outcome. He played, he played really well. And we can't really say that about Orange. He was saved by the bell here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that assessment. But he does go 2-0 up in the series, and he's sitting pretty right now to uh, work his way into the final and wait for the, the winner of the other semi-final. But he still does have to pick up his win with the last deck, which is, is his Dragon Priest. And it's not, the, it's not that bad against Druid. Nope. It's kind of okay against Rogue. Would you say so? I mean... It has bigger minions, and uh, like the matchup between Rogue and Control Priest was abysmal for the Priest, right? Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to the Dragon Priest, you can maintain board control with your big minions, like with with, uh, with Druid. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you have a lot of sticking minions to the board, even with the Deadly Fear, uh, Blade Flurry, okay. unless the Blade Flurry deals like insane 8 damage or something like that. Okay. Uh, we see a decent starting curve, but unfortunately no dragon to go with the Wormrest agent, so he's going to need to pick something up off the top to fill out the curve, and Rockbiter is a pretty nice top deck just to get rid of any potential Norsha Cleric nonsense this game. Mm -hmm. and, and that's actually the first time I see this matchup. Dragon Priest against a Midrin Shaman. I never I never played that in ladder. Like, Shaman nope. is not that popular. It is not. And so I was asking you about the Rogue versus Priest matchup as well, because for the same reasons, there's just not really a lot of Rogue about right now. So I have played a decent amount of Dragon Priest, but I don't think I've encountered too many Rogues, if any at all. Mm -hmm. That's a nice cure, I would say. Even when you're missing one mana now, it's sorry, two mana now. Ah, well, you have to keep the Twilight Whelp, that's for sure. The yep. Twilight Whelp will be the activator for both Twilight Guardian and the Blackwing Corruptor, which will be really important. Yeah, and that's often its purpose in this deck. It's it's sometimes more valuable as a um, as a battery in your hand than it is playing out. You can just keep the mm -hmm. Whelp sitting there mm -hmm. and just play it out when you need when play out when you need to or when you draw into another dragon. And in the meantime, it's just sat there activating your Twilight Guardians and your Blackwing Corruptors. So. Uh, he's continued to curve out pretty nicely here. Um, from five outside, he's doing pretty well um, to himself. Yeah. To have dodged the you know the, the the whiff cards in his deck, the big game hunters and stuff that he's teched in. He's just drawn a nice solid curve of big minions himself. So this is just kind of a almost an arena style game, right, where both people are just playing out competitive minions each turn and trying to fight for the board. Mm -hmm. The problem is that Fiber didn't hit a six attack on the fire elemental, but the Vulgar will make this not matter at all. All right, he's just gonna make the big tempo play here with the Vulgian, get himself a 6-6 six, six on the board, he can pick up the Totem Golem trade as well, and now he has total board dominance here. Yep, and this doesn't look good for Firebat. It I mean, the, um, the amount of comeback mechanism in his deck is probably just one Lightning Storm, and in this case, a Earthshock would be nice. Right. Because if you can roll a powered uh, air power totem and just F shock the Vulgian, that would be insane. Mm -hmm. But it's lacking that. So or if, if he top decks it next turn, he can just go for the Drake Earth Shock play just straight up to get the yep. guaranteed spell power. So that would definitely be a pretty nice draw. Um, Blackwing Corruptor Power Shield is the natural curve play this turn, but does Blackwing Corruptor really have a particularly good target? Well, it's not that bad. Oh! Well, that would have been a great target mm -hmm. if you would have the full mana here. All right, looks like he's just going to go for the heal here. He can afford to play out a Twilight Whelp. It does give his opponent a perfect fire elemental target. You know, three damage, you know, three health, mm -hmm, three damage mm -hmm, fire mm -hmm. elemental. But at this point, are you that concerned about a fire elemental coming down right now? Probably not, right? Well, your opponent is overloaded, but he has the coin. He has the coin, yeah. Yeah. So. It's fine because at least you know that he will use the coin. Yeah. There will be no shenanigans with Valakir if he plays one. So Drake potentially try and top deck the Earthshock. It's fine. Yeah, I think that's that's the play. Yeah. It's really, really desperate. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you would just like to play the Fire Elemental, or maybe just even low tip. Because you want to seal down those um, 
Valens chosen or Holy Novas, but at the same time, the Vol'jins are trading with uh, with your loadup anyway. Yep, and this gives uh, Orange another really powerful turn, which is dropping the Sarad, healing up his Vol'jin. You can also go with the Blackwing Corruptor play if he wants to make the tempo push, and that looks like what he's going with. I would love the Sarad. Yeah, I think that's why I was like mentally leaning towards that play. I think um, Sarad is one of the cards in the tournament that we haven't really seen go off yet. Like we've seen spell, yeah, yeah. we've seen spell slinger magic, we've seen some Grand Crusader magic, we've seen some unstable portal magic, but Sarad has pretty much just been played and dealt with immediately in all the games that we've seen so far. So hopefully we do get to see uh, some some Nexus Champion Sarad silliness in this matchup at some point. Hopefully, but hopefully. it's not looking good for Firebat. He does have the Flame Tongue Totem to start to fight back on this board. And I say start because as soon as he plays this Flame Tongue, it's probably just getting Cabal Shadow Priest. Mm -hmm. The problem with the Cabal Shadow Priest uh, on Flame Tongue Totem is the fact that you can't really buff two minions then. Yeah, yeah, the positioning always gets messed up, but at the same time, just. He doesn't really have a better play to make this turn, right? He could go for like Tempo Shadow Word Death, but I don't think that really gets him anywhere. Oh, well, maybe he disagrees. Okay. So still no Tempo, uh, so still no Naxxus Serrad. Nope. He might just drop it as a Yeti this turn, though. I can definitely see the merit in that. Ah, that's just so bad. No? No, you don't like that? Come on, just get another 4-5 on the board, yeah. No, I just wanted to see the spell. Oh, that's why okay. I say it's so bad. Right? Well, maybe he'll give us the BM heal next turn just to at least, well, well, that Hex is a little bit late, but yeah, maybe Orange will give us the BM heal just so we can at least see one spell before he uh, ends the game here. Mm. Well, this is game, right? Doesn't that matter. was a really quick quick and anticlimactic semi-final. It was, a little bit, yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. even if the Taunt totem, totem got rolled there, it wasn't an out for Fireback because it would just get Cabal Shadow Priested out of the way. F-Shop. still pull through, yeah. And well, that's well just played. Game. Don't concede! Uh, well, don't concede! Oh. <laughs> we just wanted to see the spell, man. Alright, we still have the final, Lothar. We're banking on Sarad for the final. Yep. Yeah. So, Orange is advancing to the grand final. Congratulations to him. Firebat is being eliminated during the semi final. Still gets some cash, so that's nice. But not. Mm, <laughs> I mean, he has enough titles, right? He can give some to, to his um, teammate if he wins the semi uh, the grind final. And we all know Orange did miss on the ATLC opportunity. Mm -hmm. He was one of the Arkham players that didn't compete uh, in the ATLC. Uh, I can definitely feel his pain. I mean, that was my decision to, to play in the ATLC, but just yeah. <laughs> um, so the next semi final will be RDU versus Stan Sivka. And this is something I really want to see myself. First of all, because it's my teammate. Second of all, I really like Stan Sivka's gameplay, uh, game style, and deck building. I mean, it's so off the wall. So, um, we're ready for a five minute break. Don't go anywhere, guys. And we'll be having a second semi finals in just a few minutes.